Good morning. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. Welcome to this morning's broadcast of Food for Thought. It's Saturday, the 23rd of January, 2021. So we're continuing on in the book of James, and over the past number of sessions, we've gone through chapter 1. Well, now we're approaching chapter 2, and James starts off chapter 2 by uh, saying this in verse 1. My brethren, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with partiality. See, the faith that true believers have in God is not simply faith in just another deity among many. The Bible clearly teaches that there is only one God overall, and that all other gods are really not gods at all, but they are false gods. The Bible also teaches that there is no way to connect with the one true God who designed and created the whole universe outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was chosen by the one true God to be the bridge for mankind to cross leading to himself. And he did this before the creation of the world. He planned it all out. We cannot approach the Lord Jesus Christ, it says in scripture, without true faith. As a matter of fact, Hebrews 11.6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Commentator Warren Wearsby says uh, that this faith is not a hope-so faith in God that he will save our soul. The salvation of those who believe in Christ Jesus is sure. He is the Lord of glory, the way to God, the true um, revelation of everything uh, that is God in his character. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. So the Lord was given to bring salvation to all lost people. And You know, there's some that say that he only died for certain people, but he died for the whole world. That's what the Bible says in John 3, 16 and 17. Um, God does not judge any man with partiality. What does this mean? What it means is that God does not judge people with an unfair bias compared with one another. Um, he, He doesn't show any favoritism. God judges men according to the status of their hearts, which he can see. Whether or not their hearts are surrendered to him or not. And outward appearance often has very little to do with what happens on the inside of a person. Not everything that appears to be a certain way is actually that way in reality. And those of us who have faith in Jesus Christ... James says here that we're called to view other people without favoritism because unlike our God who sees into the hearts of all people and can see through everything, we're unable to judge the heart, the motives of another person. Um, James gives an example of what this means in practical terms. He says, starting in verse 2, For if there should come into your assembly a man with gold rings in and fine apparel. And there should also come in a poor man in filthy clothing. And you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say to him, you sit here in a good place and say to the poor man, you stand there or sit at my feet. Have you shown, have you not shown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? See, favoritism shown to one person over another because of their favorable social status or the way that they appear on the outside, it's wrong because when we do this, we actually take on the role of God, assuming that we can see into the heart of another person based on our five senses. Uh, This is evil. Um, This is a return to the garden sin where Adam and Eve wanted to have the control 
their own control, I guess you could say, over the world and its outcomes. And this includes other people. You see, Adam and Eve and all of us since then, all of us who are sinners, all have sinned, fall short of the glory of God, by the way. Um, humanity wanted to possess something that God, only God, in His infinite wisdom could possess. And that is the ability to read into another person's thoughts. Quite simply, the, the desire to have this ability is the quest for being our own God. And scriptures tell us that there is only one God, so when we play God, we become judges with evil thoughts. And this is what James is trying to say here. When someone does this, he's not acting in faith. He's not trusting in the one true God to sustain him and take care of him. He's actually attempting to manipulate his circumstances for his own benefit. He's hoping somehow to enrich himself with the favor of the rich man, subconsciously supposing that that man might just bring something onto our little table that might be useful for us somewhere, sometime in the future. On the other hand, the poor man can't bring anything of worth to contribute to our betterment. And this is why in the verses prior to this, this verse 1 in chapter uh, 1, we see James saying that pure religion in God's eyes involves um, coming to the rescue of marginalized people in their distress. That's part of pure religion. The other part is being uh, pure and, and not being polluted by the world. But James further explains how when we show favoritism to people because of their outward appearance, we, um, we approach our faith from completely the wrong angle. The, the reality is that the rich man is no better than the poor man. As a matter of fact, we're forgetting that there's a propensity for rich men who are controlled by their own sin natures to use their positions as leverage over us, over others, to gain an advantage for themselves. The poor man has no such leverage. This is why God very often asks a person who is blessed with riches in this life to be generous with their possessions and their riches. And, and why often... Poor people find it easier to surrender to the Lordship of Christ than rich people. You see, the rich man has a hang-up. He or she is more apt to try and use their power of their position to manipulate their circumstances to a greater advantage for themselves at the expense of others. Again, sinning because they're now trying to play God when they do this, trying to be their own little demigods. Because of the tendency of the rich man who is controlled by his sin nature to act in this way, James tries to reason with us as believers as to why showing favoritism on our part from external viewpoints is wrong. It's not just because we judge uh, people and become evil judges when we do this, but when we do this, we're acting foolishly because we're forgetting that the very rich man who is himself trying to manipulate us to his own advantage is himself fueled by the passion for power and being a demigod because of his sin nature. Remember the story of the rich young ruler who came and asked to follow Jesus? What did Jesus do? What did he say to this man? He asked the young man, to go and sell all that he possessed and to give it all away to the poor and uh, then come and follow him. And the young man was unwilling to do this because he, he really liked the power that his money gave him. In his perceptions, he was reluctant to give up this godlike power which he valued more than serving the one true God. So James continues to reason with the readers, showing really how insane it is for us to show partiality towards people by judging them on outward appearances. And he says, he continues with this reasoning, saying in verse 5, Listen, my beloved brethren, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in 
faith and heirs in the kingdom which he has promised to those who love him. But you have dishonored the poor man. Do not the rich oppress you and drag you into the courts? Do they not blaspheme the noble name by which you are called? Now, the point of this is not, James is not just is trying to, not trying to say that all people who have riches are bad, but what he's saying is that it's much more difficult for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven because they have a greater temptation to play God with the power that they've been given in how they can uh, use the, their riches to manipulate others. Well, what does this mean for us? James had an audience who was likely less affluent than we are here in Canada and North America today. The truth is that in our present society, we are rich in terms of this world's standards. standards. Let's face it, even our poorest people are like rich people in some other countries in the world. So as rich men and women, we, we have to look at it through that lens. It's hard for us to be saved, but not impossible. We must be willing to give up our propensity to try and gain godlike demigod power and advantage over other people and be generous um, with those who are disadvantaged. That's what God's calling us to. Paul tells his apprentice Timothy in 1 Timothy 6:18, um, 17 and 18, instruct those who are rich in this present age not to be conceited and not to put their hope in the uncertainty of wealth but in God who richly provides all things for us to enjoy. Instruct them to do good, to be good, rich in good works, and to be generous and ready to share, treasuring up for themselves a firm foundation for the future so that they may take hold of that which is truly life. So as rich people in this society, may God give us mercy not to try to be demigods, but to be generous with the provisions that he's given us to help those who are truly in need. This is Food for Thought. God bless you.